everybody. Today we are going to show you, well, Dad's going to show you how to use these DC power clamp and clamp meters. <laughs> and he's going to show, and I'm going to follow him around because I don't know much about this. And he's going to show you how to do it with batteries, inverters, and especially solar. And he's going to show you a few tips and tricks you've probably never seen before. And me too. Yep. There's going to be some things I'm going to show you guys that y'all do not know. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back after Kira's message. everybody there's a thing that a lot of people do not know about these amp clamps ac and dc both and uh, ac um it's pretty much a work uh power that you're going to be using in other words you're applying it it's not necessarily something charging batteries and i'm going to show you something a lot of people don't realize about these clamp meters and now these are AC and DC, so they do both. But a lot of people don't know how to read the clamp meter based on its directional setup. And so I'm going to show you this. Now this is the this is the uh, clamp meter sitting here on this 3200 watt inverter. It's currently pulling 60 amps right now. That's just because it's running and producing power and, and, and running things. Now. I'm going to take this off of here and I'm going to show you something. And then I'm going to show you this on a battery. So let me pull it off of here. We're going to go down here and I'll adjust it to 60 so it's a little finer. Now these are lithium batteries and these lithium batteries are in alignment with lead acid. They're all hooked up to lead acid and they're charging. So we're going to put this on here. Now this is charging. And you'll see here that there's actually a discharge going on of 25 amps going backwards, 26 amps, because the sun is going overhead. Let me show you that here. Watch this, 28. And it's going to continue flowing backwards because the battery voltage here has dropped due to clouds. So all of these have dropped, see? These are normally about 38 amps. So they're all dropped. It's very cloudy today. And we're going to see that here in just a second. Now this is connecting to battery banks. This connects a lithium, a pile of lithium batteries and it connects a lead acid battery bank. And then these are part of that connection here. So it, there's also some more outside. So this connects to these right here. Now, right now it is, these batteries right here are back feeding. And how do I know it's back feeding? You see that minus? It's back feeding. Now watch. I'm going to flip this over, sorry, backwards, and we'll look at it, and you'll think, well, it's getting that charge. That charge is coming in, but the face of your meter, the face of your meter is your direction. So flow, the direction the DC flowing is going to go that direction. So in this one's case, if I put the flow here, it's showing it not flowing forward. It's showing it, you see the negative, flowing backwards. Now, I can take the same thing and put it over here on the positive. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to show positive flowing outbound because it has a, basically a positive marker it, because it don't have a negative marker. Okay? And that's based on it backfeeding into this battery bank. Now... Let's go over here, get more plain spoken on it here. I'll use my little unity here. I'll put a link to these. These are the ones I use professionally. And you don't need a $300 Klein or, or some other fancy brand. These are actually extremely good. And I'll show you a characteristic you probably never knew about with clamp meters. Now, it's a DC clamp meter function that it'll, it'll, it'll act up, okay, and I'll show it to you. So in this one's case right now, it's also backflowing, you see? So power, if it's forward, would go that direction. 
but since the power is flowing out of this battery, out, it is actually, now look, watch. Give it a second. Now it's flowing back into the battery because the solar is starting to pick up now. Oop, it timed out. There. So currently it's flowing power back into the battery. You see now how that minus went away? You see it's on DC. And now it's flowing a quarter amp into the battery. And as more solar is produced, the more it will flow back into the battery. This is a lithium battery getting its power from the lead acid right now. Okay. So let me show you this little trick here that you probably don't know about. Now you get it, even though it's a quality meter, okay, the unities are very good quality meters. I want to show you something here, the sensitivity. Now I want to put it over here on this big inverter. And you notice this, and then we're going to take it away out here over the floor. And you see how it drops? Now, what will really mess with these meters is inductive loads. This is a refrigerator. It has an inductive load. It has a magnet, a magnet motor in it. Now, the compressor right in front of me just kicked off. So it's only running one, but it started out nearly three. It's not really three amps of power in that. It's just the radio reaction from the frequency that it puts off with that compressor, okay? Um, over here, there's a difference between when you're using a clamp meter, DC clamp meter, power being charged in or power being consumed. There's a difference. So we'll go over here again. Let's get um, up here. Now, you would think power going in, right? Power going, that you should put it like that. That would be power going in, correct? No, it's going back to battery. It's power being consumed. So, look. There's no negative on there. So it's, it's consuming 59 amps. All right, now you want to see the, uh, the power flowing, the direction of its flow. It gives you the same on the positive side, you see? Now, I can flip that over on the positive side and you've got it showing like a negative. The reason that is is because the difference between a battery being charged and an inverter consuming the power is that the power flows back to the battery. They don't both flow in. Does that make sense? They don't both flow in. In a battery, they both flow in. Okay, so let me show you a little trick, and we'll take the Kiwis, because I really, this one here is, I, I, honestly, this one's good, but I freaking love this one. All right, I'm going to show you something, all right? If you wonder, it's a very dull day today, I'm going to get up here on the roof, okay? So I'll edit this climb. I'm, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up that. All right. Ladders make me nervous nowadays after my little accident there. All right. Okay. Up here on the roof is the solar panels. Now, down there, say on my controllers, I'm not getting the power. That row up there is putting out a ton of power. But for some reason, I'm not getting the power out of this one. Something's wrong. Do I come out here and disassemble half of this? to be able to get the power readings off of each panel. Not really, because if I'm trying to get a reading off of a panel while it's disconnected, it's not under load. But that's where this comes into play. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're going to take and find your wires and you will put them in the clamp. So right now, it's very cloudy, guys. Um, right now, I've got one amp. Okay, so that looks pretty good. That panel's working. I get over here. That's on the positive side there. And I can identify my wires that way too. Nope, I've got one amp on this one. Okay. And by the way, it's 632. And I'll upload this video tomorrow. Okay, so let's try over here. What do I got? Ah, one amp. 
Let's try that one. That's the positive side of that one. So when you've got a, there we go, right at one amp, okay? And I can watch, I'll show it to you here by blocking, blocking the panel. Look at that, I got my hand on the panel. See that? Drops like a rock. I got big hands, but I mean, it drops like a rock. Lock. Take my hand off of it. See it shoot back up? That's extremely cloudy. So, and I'll show you that too here. Very cloudy. <laughs> That's the sky. All right, so let's get over here right quick. These are some older Renegies. This is an older Mighty Max. All right. How well is my Mighty Max doing? Very cloudy. Well, not too bad. That's the positive side. And you'll see the positive side because like I just told you, the direction of flow, it's charging. See how it's going to show that negative mark on the positive? It's charging. I hope y'all stayed with that. And then over here on the negative side, it's charging. Remember, it's pulling. So it's going to show that. Okay? So it's doing pretty good. That's an old one. All right, what about these Renegies? Silly damn Renegies. Right there, see? All right, so what do we got over here? Now this is the cluster, this is the cable going out. So what do we got? On three panels, we got basically about four amps, all right? And let's get down here. That panel's only putting out, uh, see I'm doing a lot of justice, I'm actually leaning over the top of it. So let's, let's try over here to where, I'm not leaning over the top of the panel. How about that? All right, so this is the wrap up in the evening. So now what happens if I come up here and I've got 0.85 or, or 4.7 here and, and I got 4.7 and 4.7 and over here I got 0 0.02, bad panel. Does that make sense? Right there. Did I have to disconnect anything at all? Did I have to disconnect anything to do that? So we have these nine bus bar energies. See, that makes it easy right there. I'll get on the other side of the roof so we can get a better view of this, okay? Yeah, I'm squirrely on this roof nowadays. All right, so I'll get in here. I don't know which direction it's flowing in here. Okay, there we go. I'm not blocking the sun and it's showing 1.13. See that? 1.15. So that one's okay. But if I check this one over here, and it says, you know, 0 0.79, and this one over here says 1.13, then my problem's over here. It could just be my panel is dirty, because you've seen when I put my hand on the other panel, what it did. It could be something as simple as one cell having something oily or a bird dropping that could cause that. So, I just want you guys to understand how these actually work. So that while you're trying to do a job and you're not understanding how it works or or you feel like something ain't you know going well it gives you let me get down here i can just jump from roof to roof i got nine thousand square foot of roof out here guys um i can show you how you can test by just checking the cables okay so let me get down in the shop one more time or I can walk over here. Here we go. All right, so here's some of the big Steon panels. Now I can't get to their wiring, but this is on my trailer that I built. And all of this, all this solar out here is pumping in great power right now. I would have to reach up underneath the panels by walking the walk right there to test them, but I still can without having, without having to remove the panel. Now, I have 24 more of these. As soon as I'm healthy, they're going to go here. 24 times 135 watts of panel. Because this roof is set up for the Steons, I have ran the power from the, uh, well, I'm backwards, so that wire actually runs the opposite direction. I have run the power from the grape solar that's on top of these, this little this trailer right here. I have run, that's the trailer we just took at the top of, I have run the great solar power down through the cables that are set up to come out through this box for the Steons that go on the roof. That, the Steon is a, is a SIGS, 
it's a style of like an amorphous panel. But what I've done is, pardon all the mess in the shop of the garage in there, but I've ran it through there, and right now it's feeding those big 60 amp um, MPPT. So they're only getting about what? What you doing? Huh. Oh, okay. Here. All right, guys, get you a good clamp meter. Learn the direction. Learn interference can come from things as simple as this. See, even the, even the Kuwaits gets a little bit of interference out of it. The Unity is so sensitive. This thing is so freaking sensitive. I put it on 40 amp there so you can get a good, perfect. It's so sensitive that it picks up. See? It picks up. And if you kind of angle it at the direction of the compressor in the back, Angle that like an antenna. Look at that. Boom, take it away. Drops like a rock. So, what do you think, Kira? Did you learn something? Yeah, I've just been like behind you guys, silently observing. <laughs> Being creepy. She's, are you creepy? Yes. Oh, man, that's scary. Yeah. All right, guys. Y'all be good. Get you some of those. They're important. Just like, like her. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.